I recently spoke about the critic reviews for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and most of them have been negative. It's due out on June 30th, but it actually looks like the film could be worse than I thought. Is that even possible? Apparently there's a leak, but I don't know if this is confirmed yet. We're going to talk about it nonetheless. It concerns the ending of the film, so if you want to avoid what could be a potential spoiler, look away now. This article is from Bounding Into Comics, linked below. Alleged Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny plot leak claims Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character makes the heroic choice to knock out Indiana Jones to protect history. An alleged plot leak for Lucasfilm's upcoming Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny film claims that Phoebe Waller-Bridge's Helena character is the one who makes the critical heroic decision because Indiana Jones refuses to do so. Not only does she make the heroic decision, but the decision is punching Indiana Jones and knocking him out. Well, at least he doesn't get kicked in the nuts. If this is true, it's a truly undignified way for the character of Indy to bow out, relegated in his own movie, by a new female character designed to basically upstage him and overshadow him by the sounds of it. This information is according to Reddit user Lunik Jones. I won't go into the specific time travel plot details in the film. I'll skip ahead to what they claim is the conclusion. Lunik Jones details that Indiana Jones does not want to return to his present, but would rather stay in Syracuse, presumably in the past, because he believes there is nothing for him in 1969. In contrast, Helena attempts to convince Indy to return to the present, believing if he stays in the past, he would change the course of history. Indy apparently is unconvinced by Helena's arguments, so she resorts to punching him and knocking him out. When Indy awakes, he's back in 1969 in New York City in his bed. He then reproaches Helena for having brought him back to the present, although there is nothing for him there. However, Helena counters that there is something for him to continue living for, and Marion shows up in his apartment with a number of groceries. The film earlier made it clear that Marion and he were either divorced or on the brink of divorce as divorce papers were pinned to Indy's fridge, held up by a picture of Marion. This is so stupid and unnecessary to break them up. They got married at the end of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Their relationship story arc had been concluded to a satisfying ending. Breaking them up and putting them back together as a means of creating another happy ending is just asinine and pointless. The two eventually appear to reconcile whatever contrived issues the film gives them, to have them embrace in a kiss with the plot synopsis explaining they reenact the boat scene from Raiders in reverse before Indy kisses her. Later, the article says, It's not surprising that Indiana Jones would not make the heroic decision and have that be left to Waller Bridge's character. Ford described his character in an interview with Fandango as not so strong, not so brave, not so attentive, but about to go on a grand adventure with a very fascinating set of compatriots and adversaries. Well, that doesn't exactly sound like a protagonist I want to root for. It sounds like Indy is emasculated in his own film, and he's not even the real hero of the story. The Mary Sue, who is brand new to the franchise, gets to make the big important decision in the plot that determines the outcome. Indy doesn't even save the day in his own final swan song. His goddaughter does? Now again, all of this is to be confirmed. If this is true, my expectations of this film have just gone from bad to worse. In my opinion, this sounds mediocre enough to be plausible. Now, there is more detail in the article. It's linked below. Check it out if you want to read it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.